I don't know if you've heard, but the Elizabeth line is finally open. In part one, we checked out Paddington, Bond Street, Tottenham Court Road, Farringdon and Liverpool Street whilst discovering the tale of how the railway got built. Now, let's continue this story whilst heading east through to the end of the line. We're at the entrance to Whitechapel station and again, this might be one of my top tier stations. This station entrance will be familiar to anyone who's been to Whitechapel since about 1876, but it's not actually the original tube station entrance. This was built for the East London Railway, which is now part of the overground. This here, now a Costa, was the entrance that the district line built a few years later when they came through. Anyway, it's all now just one big combined station. And what Crossrail have done is they've built a massive bridge over both of those stations to get to their platforms. Those lines, by the way, being one of the rare points on the network where the underground goes over the overground and the overground goes under the underground. Well, over both of those is this new sweeping ticket hall and passageway that's been placed delicately atop the overground platforms. And it's at the far end that you can descend down to the percolate depths. You may have noticed that all of the platforms we've been to have looked quite similar to each other. That's happening because whilst at the surface there were individual architects for each station that were designing the place to fit into the space and area that it was in, the rule was that as you came down to platform level it all had to come together into one unified crossrail look, which for most of the stations is this glass fibre concrete that sweeps passengers along these cavernous and fairly uncluttered halls towards the trains. The lighting is designed to be warmer the closer to the platforms you get to encourage you into the waiting areas. Route finding is also helped by these totems instead of the hanging signage we're used to on the tube, complete with uplighters to illuminate the passageways. It's very spacious and bright and very unlike what we're used to on an underground railway. And it's here in Whitechapel where the line splits, with one half going onto the Abbey Wood branch and the other half going to Stratford and then onto Essex. The Stratford branch is not operationally connected to the rest of the network right now. And so if you wanted to go to Ilford for some reason, you'd have to change the above ground Elizabeth line at Liverpool Street. In the meantime, we're going to Canary, Canary Wharf. Wharf. The above ground Elizabeth line has been going on for some time, bewilderingly this 2022 opening is actually phase three of the Crossrail rollout and there are more phases coming. You've had TFL Rail, the world's most created and aboard meeting name, operating on the eastern part of the line out of Liverpool Street here since 2015 when it was transferred from Greater Anglia. From 2017, this included the trains getting replaced with the Purple Class 345s, which as they look a bit familiar, that's because they are from the same family of trains as the Class 710s on the overgrounds. And yes, trains have families too, didn't you know? Beleaguered mothers, absent fathers, strange uncles. Phase two was the Paddington to Reading bit becoming part of TFL Rail, along with Heathrow Connect being absorbed into the service. You know Heathrow Connect, the slower, cheaper, and much less advertised version of the Heathrow Express. Though not as cheap as the Piccadilly line, which is 14 times less expensive. Now slap me down and call me Martin Lewis, because that's a cost of living saving you were not expecting to hear about right there. And then stage three, which is right now, the central section open, but not connected to the other two wings. At some point this year, the connection will be made. And then hopefully by this time next year, the timetable will accelerate it so there's a train every two and a half minutes. So it's open but there's still a ways to go. Anyway, Canary Wharf Station is a bit meh now. Not because building a 310 meter long and 18 meter below the waterline station box in the middle of a 19th century dock isn't impressive, but just because it's been here for years now, it's boring. Here's something interesting though. When the route was first being planned, this was gonna be a much smaller affair until the Canary Wharf group decided that what London really needed another of was a shopping center and plonked that on top. Oh, but what about the fabulous roof garden? Yes, it's nice. It's very nice. It's very nice for 10 minutes and then you never go again. I thought the original design was quite nicely connected to the dock it sits in and not just some giant monolith, but what do I know? I'm just a person on the internet. Anyway, I'm running out of steam a little bit over here in East London, but I made it to Custom House Station. Custom house, you're thinking? Well, this is really the Excel Centre station, you know, the place where that boat show happens or Grand Designs Live. 
there was first a railway station on this patch in 1855 but eventually the DLR came along and made it a bit redundant and it closed down in 2006. Adjacent to that we've now rebuilt Custom House Station as a Lizzie Line station. Oh I don't know, are we doing Lizzie Line? The Liz? This station you'll have noticed is above ground and the architectural inspo for it, let me just check my notes here, is the 18 degree angle the roads next to it make. In the Crossrail story, we're building and building. Stations are going up, tunnels are going down, somebody died. It's probably best to leave that where it is. And we come up to August 2018. Now, December 2018 for years had been the go live date for the Elizabeth Line. And obviously 40 months later, filming it on opening day, that's quite funny. If you were following the progress of the railway at the time, they were ramping up there, we're almost there messaging. Officials at the London Assembly meetings were reporting everything's totally fine. I went on tours of almost complete stations. I've even got merch with the opening date on it. It was all looking good until three months before when suddenly they said, oops, we need another year. And then after that, another year. And in the middle of 2022. And then today. The CEO resigned in disgrace. Eventually the chairman of the board was forced to step down. And into the blaze strode the dazzling Mark Wilde. Now I like Mark Wilde. He's been realistic, honest and effective with a reassuring Northeastern accent. We will open the Elizabeth line in the first half of 2022. Piecing it's together what he said in interviews along with all the various post-mortems that have been written in the exciting world of transportation blogs, it reads like the reason for this sudden and massive delay was a complete lack of effective management at several levels. Contractors were messing about, nothing was integrated together, nobody had their eyes on the overall picture and lots of little things were just going wrong all over the place. After an explosion at a power plant for the line, everything started to unravel and when the walls finally came tumbling down, suddenly a new team had to figure out what needed to be achieved on a project run by several different construction companies across hundreds of sites. With problems spanning structural, electrical, mechanical, software problems and they had to create an entirely new programme of work to achieve it. It's not a sexy answer as to why this was all delayed but bad management and bad luck would seem to cover it quite nicely. But it's worth bearing in mind that many, many rail projects open late. The Jubilee Line was two years delayed. The Jubilee Line extension then was pushed back a year with only a few months left to go. The Northern Line extension last year was like a year delayed and nobody seemed to care. The Central Line I think was supposed to open in like 1896 or something and ended up opening basically in the next century. And it will keep happening. HS2 gets delayed in half decade increments at this point. I'll be lucky if I get to ride on that before I die. But in the end, everybody just forgets. Once it's there, once it's part of the furniture, you forget that you were annoyed by its lack of existence for a few years. We just all move on. And we move on to, well, take a breath, North Londoners, because uh, we're in South London. At Woolwich Station. The station that was not meant to be. Because back when the route was being decided upon and initially approved, there was no Woolwich. Well, there, there was a Woolwich, but the line was going to sneakily pass underneath and hope that none of the local residents would notice. Then the Woolwich Arsenal housing developer ponied up the money to build the station box here, but not the rest of it. And then at the very last minute, the council jumped in along with another housing developer to pay for the rest of the station to be built. So we basically got this one for free which was sensible. I mean, how many times have you and your friends ever even been to Woolwich? This helps put it on the map, the chaotic IKEA sponsored map. Woolwich is a slightly weirder station. I mean, down here it's a box station like Paddington or Canary Wharf. So it doesn't have that glass fiber curvy thing. It's more straight lines and solid paneling. But up at the entrance, you're basically in a 17th century square. Whilst this is now quite nice redeveloped housing with some slightly less inspiring new house and going up around it, this used to be the Royal Arsenal, a massive military establishment for designing, building and storing guns and cannons and explosives and ammunition for the British Armed Forces. 
The design of the station features rifling and other old weaponry motifs, and most interestingly, this large dead man's penny memorial featuring the design of a plaque that was sent to every family that lost a relative in the First World War. Now that's an interesting choice. I like that. So Woolwich was a late addition to the line, but an even later addition is the station that's only starting to get built right now between Paddington and Acton Main Line. Old Oak Common Station is being built at the point in the line where it intersects with HS2, where depending on which political wind is blowing strongest, some HS2 services are quite likely to terminate at instead of making it all the way into Euston. So you can look forward to that interchange opening up in about 2026. I'm quite sure. And finally, we arrive at Abbey Wood, and it is the 24th of May, 2022, the opening day of the Elizabeth Line. Now, Abbey Wood is somewhere I confess I have never been. It's named, as you might have thought, after an abbey, which I've never been to, and it's associated wood, which I've never been to. It would come first in an alphabetical list of all national rail stations in the UK, so please feel free to use that in the next pub quiz you put together. This station is made of wood, which I love. It's got a timber roof, seating. They brought green, or, you know, wooden brown, into the Elizabeth line here, as well as a few panels of the glass fibre concrete that's everywhere in the underground London sections. You get a sense of how enormously long the trains are, given how far away the platform stretches from the station, and you can see stretching off to the east, where a future extension may one day go. So the future of Crossrail is first of all finishing it, but included in the plans for decades now have been the idea of a Crossrail 2, which would go from southwest London through the centre to Dalston and beyond. <laughs> Look, there's Norbert and Friendly having his moment. But this has essentially been mothballed after TfL had to beg for billions of pounds during the COVID pandemic just to stay afloat. I really wouldn't expect to see Crossrail 2 anytime soon. I was there at the opening of the Elizabeth Line this morning at Paddington Station at 6.30 a.m. And I've been riding it the whole day and I can tell you very safely that I really, really like it. I know, it's just a railway, but even the vaguest look at the story of London would tell you that this city is literally shaped by its railways. It may have been beset by problems in its construction and it certainly made a big mess of the tube map, but it is a massive and beautiful piece of transport infrastructure that this city can be proud of when it's finished. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Elizabeth Line. Please leave a comment below. Uh, please share the video if you enjoyed it. You can tip me, uh, the link is below as well, uh, just to pay for all the blasted tickets I've gone through going up and down this line all day. And uh, for now though, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go home by going back to Paddington, again. <laughs>